coach, let's talk about pro ball. Okay. How was that transition from senior year mm -hmm. to rookie season, agent, stress, no stress, excitement, all that? All of the above. <laughs> I had um, actually hurt my ankle really, really bad going into the Pac-12 tournament. Um, I didn't know if I was going to play in the Pac-12 tournament, and it was a huge... It was a huge thing for me um, deciding if I was going to play and if I was going to play injured because I knew it could affect me either positively or negatively. It was a really big risk. Mm -hmm. I played. We lost. My ankle, I have bad ankle issues. I've had four ankle surgeries. Um, so it was a risk for me doing that. And I ended up going undrafted, free agent to Seattle. Okay. Um, for Brian Adler. He brought me up there. Um, oh, cool. I... Got all the way through training camp, played three games, two or three games, I don't remember. And um, I was the last one cut. Mm -hmm. After that, I was kind of lost because, like I said, you go from being a McDonald's All-American, yep. heavily recruited, college is insane and incredible and exciting and sad and every emotion you could ever feel. And then basketball is kind of over for a little bit, and you don't really know what you're doing anymore. You're all you, that's all you've done. Your whole life is basketball. And so for me, it, I had already, I'd signed with an agent, done all that, and you know it was that stressful. If I was my agent, I would have hated me because I was. Well, have you found anything? Have you found anything? Am I going overseas? Am I not going overseas? What am I doing? Do I need to get a job? What am I? What am I supposed to do? I ended up going to China and selling nice. uh, Timothy Catching's contract for her. Okay. Um, which was great. I loved China. It was amazing. Um, came back and went to D.C. Mm -hmm. The same situation happened there. Got released. Um, and it had kind of, I was kind of slowly starting to get over it. Yeah. Um, I didn't love being overseas. Yeah. You know, the situation I was in, it wasn't bad money. It was great money. Mm -hmm. It was a fun country. I never thought I would say that about China. I never thought it'd be somewhere where I could see myself going back and right. actually exploring. It was it was really awesome, but I have two younger sisters. I am a homebody mm -hmm. and for me it was one of those things where, you know, my body hurts. Is mm -hmm. it worth it? Is, is is this grind of working out twice a day and still not making it to a league that that's really the only thing you ever thought you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. If that's not an option, what are you doing this for? Yeah. Because it sure isn't the money. Yeah. So why are you going overseas for eight months at a time? Why are you missing <clears throat> your middle sister's career? Why are you missing your youngest sister grow up? You know, why are you missing all this stuff for... It, to me, it was just an empty mm -hmm. feeling that I had. And I started training when I was in college, just training random kids. Just cool. You yeah. know, whatever. To make a couple extra bucks here and there. And it became something where... I was like, I, I'm good at it, I think. I at <laughs> least know what I'm talking about as far as experience goes. Of course. And it's fun. And you can make some good money doing it. Mm -hmm. So I started doing it more seriously and more seriously. And about three years ago, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. So for me, professional basketball was just hard on my body. I'm not built for it. Mm -hmm. And... There was just nothing holding me there. And I still get to play basketball, mm -hmm. and I still get to be involved with it. So it's not something where I sit in an office all day and I'm just, you know, miss basketball all the time. That's not what it is. It's yeah. just, it just wasn't for me. Right. It wasn't worth going to tryouts and trying to prove myself every single... Mm -hmm. I had done so much stuff within basketball my whole career that... I was just done trying to prove it to people. Yeah. I know what I, I knew what I was doing. <clears throat> and by, by by that point, we've already got about twenty years on on our bodies anyway. Uh, yeah, like it's a exhaust, lot. It's exhausting. Yeah. So, um, let's let's talk about giving some advice to um, young male or female hoopers in middle school right now. Middle schoolers, what what should they focus on um, getting better at, and how? Fundamentals. Okay. First, and I brought it up today at uh, camp. How many of you guys work on your footwork for shooting? And almost all of them raised their hand. I remember that, yeah. And we went live, and maybe three kids you could tell had actually done mm -hmm. any footwork at all. Mm -hmm. And it, footwork is for everything. It's for ball handling. If your feet suck, your hands suck. Mm -hmm. if you, you know, if for shooting, if you can't get your feet set on 
any movement, then you're not going to get your shot off very often. Right. Everything, defense, there's a proper way to play defense, there's a proper way to recover, everything. So footwork is huge for me, fundamentals, pivoting. It's rare now where I see a middle school kid, even high school kids, catch the ball and pivot comfortably. That's true. It's a very not look awkward. It's a very <laughs> hectic situation for them to have to pivot for more than two seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and just moving properly. A lot of kids don't, and I know I did it, but taking that stuff seriously as far as, you know, okay, I'm, I, I'm not super flexible, I'm not super mobile. It's not funny mm -hmm. because it is going to come back and bite you in the butt. So yeah. learning how to move, learning how to train your body, not to just be a basketball player, to be an athlete and taking care of yourself will give you longevity. So doing all that stuff and just working on fundamentals is so important. And I know that's like the basic answer that people give, but I wish I would have actually It's listened. all about the basics Because it, it really yeah. is. Like all these <clears throat> NBA players and WNBA players, they do that stuff. Yeah. And they do it as professional basketball players. So mm -hmm. it never ends. Fundamentals never end. Dirk Nowitzki still does pivot shooting and shoots off one foot to work on his balance. These guys do this stuff as the best basketball players in the world. So right. if they do it, why wouldn't we do it? Right. Is kind of how I see things, you right. know? So fundamentals it's yeah. su super super crucial and I know it's boring sometimes but if you get bored with the basics you're never going to be good enough to do the other stuff right so so let's go high school I think all of that that you just said it funnels into high school as well mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll be more specific um on high school let's say uh juniors and seniors you know hey it's it's crunch time I need to play well for AU, play well for school, well for school, so I can get noticed um, and showcase my talents, my strengths. How do you help them find those strengths? A lot of kids, a lot of kids don't know what they're good at. Totally. High school, I'm like seniors, what do totally. you, what's your thing? You know? I had this conversation actually the other day with my, um, I coach at a D3 university in Oregon as well. Okay. And I had asked one of my players, what's your identity? What do you do really well? And she just kind of stared at me and I was like, do you drive to the basket? Do you shoot pull-ups? Mm -hmm. Are you a knockdown three-point shooter? Are you a slasher? What do you do? Right. And she was just like, I think I shoot pull-ups. And I was like, then you don't. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, if you don't know what your identity is, then how do you yeah. ever develop a counter on that? How do you ever know what they're taking away from, like, how do you ever, how do you know how the defense is going to play you if you don't even know what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. And so, talking about that stuff with her, it really did get me thinking about, you know, how do you help kids find out what their identity is? And it's something that if you don't know what your identity is, you can't build off of it. You know, I didn't know what my identity was until I had ankle surgery in high school and all of a sudden all I could do was shoot. Mm -hmm. And I would just sit in a chair and I would shoot a thousand shots every day. It's the only thing I could do to stay involved in some ball handling. But I became a knockdown shooter and that was my identity. Right. So now that I'm a shooter, okay, well now I have to get a mid-range game. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have to be able to, you know, hit floaters. I have to be able to do this. I have to be able to do that. So for high school kids, figure out what it is that you do and do it well. Yep. And don't try to do anything else until you do one thing really well. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many players that do a lot of things average. Yeah. I can't tell you how many college coaches ask me, do you know of any just pure shooters out there? No. There's maybe one per class, two per class now. Mm -hmm. They're hard to find. Do you know any on-ball lockdown defenders? One or two. Mm -hmm. just, you know, I have a kid who can do everything. And it's just kind of like average. Well, coach, I have 20 people that can do that. Mm -hmm. What separates them from the next person? Mm -hmm. Don't try and do things that you're not great at because coaches see through that. Yeah. They're not stupid. They've been doing this for years, and it's their livelihood. Right. If, once you find out what your identity is, and it's what you feel most comfortable doing, perfect it. Be the best you can at it, and then you start adding counters to it. If you're a knockdown shooter, be the best knockdown shooter you can be. Mm -hmm.